I want to give a first shout out to Taryn Poole for motivating me to make this show today. Number one, this is going to come from my heart. Taryn Poole has a YouTube channel. Make sure you check it out. He is interviewing academic after academic in Islamic studies. He is a Muslim. I consider him a friend. And I hope that you will as well. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel and let's do this together. Let's do this together. I want to tell you a story that I think is very important. And it's dear to my heart and what I, who I am, what I am, and my whole purpose with what I do at Myth Vision. Sometimes I get polemical. Sometimes I get jabby. But this is really my heart. With what just had to Salman Rushdie, we saw what happened. And I felt my patriot side come out, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and that's justified. However, we have such a stereotypical view of our Muslim brothers and sisters in the West, and yes, brothers and sisters, that we paint them in a certain light or view them in such a negative light that I think we need to start compartmentalizing when people are mean or bad in the way that they present themselves that not everybody thinks the same way. And even if there is a large amount of people who think like that, not all of them do. We need to create connections and allies with those who share a common ethic, who share a common goal. And that's my whole goal. So here's the story. Seven years ago, you know, I was getting off of heroin and I was addicted to drugs and also alcohol for a long time in my life as an adult. And I put my telephone number out there in the internet world on my recovery channel for a long time. I had to change the number since then, but I was taking phone calls from average, just people who are struggling and suffering with drug addiction. And this epidemic is serious. And people who would call are people from every stripe of life, every color, every creed, everything you can imagine, calling to tell me their story and how I've encouraged them or the kind of things that they were going through. But I got a call one day from a mother and she called and she begged, what can I do? Like, how can I save my son? I need help. Please help me, Derek. Please help me. And I don't know why, but it started feeling like she was my mother. She really made me feel like she was my mom after many calls. I finally did something I never would have done in a million years. I literally would have never done this, but she called me and called me and called me. And I said, you know what? Let's, let's help him because they didn't have money to get into a rehab program and then him walk out. And he had been watching my YouTube channel, Derek Lambert on addiction and was inspired by me, but he was stuck. So I took a trip up to New York City, picked him up and brought him into my home. And I had him at my house for pretty much a month, almost a month. And the household that he is raised in are Muslims. And the mother and father are some of the nicest people I have ever met. I'm not, listen, I'm not BSing you. Like they were the most down to earth loving. His mom was such a tender hearted person. And the dad was just, Derek, help me keep, keep my son alive, you know? And I was like, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. He almost stayed the whole month. We had some complications at the end, but we had conversations in the meantime while he was at my house. And we talked about our disagreements, but we were cool. We got along. And I say that to say, like, I had him in my house helping him with drug addiction, and his family saw me as their own son. These are Muslims. Oh. You know, the West has a stereotype and we need to get rid of that stereotype and just base it off people, individual people and their actions. And my last YouTube post, Taryn responded, the gentleman that I showed you whose YouTube channel at the beginning, I hope you go subscribe. He responded and said, Derek, this, this right here looks a bit bad. And yes, I did come with a lot of patriot tendencies in that. And I'm, I'm justified in being that way. But at the same time, I realize 
most people can't compartmentalize. And my heart is to try and do harm reduction. Being a struggling drug addict most of my life, I understand that I'd rather people go and be prescribed medications that may have side effects, but that they're not being buried in the ground by their loved ones. I would much rather harm reduction be the case. And I thought to myself, is this post productive in creating unity between Muslims and non-Muslims? What am I saying this for? Why am I venting this? Why am I saying these things? And do I expect Muslims to change other Muslims? Like that's just going to happen? I feel like we need to create a relationship with people who come from different backgrounds and create those friendships, whatever the religion back, religious background is, so that we can help educate people. They can understand us. We can understand them and we can find common ground. I really believe this is where the change can start to happen. You may want them to change and be more morally focused on this or that. If they're somebody of a different faith, they may want you to understand them better so that you're not out here polemically only jabbing those who believe in a certain faith or tradition. And so that's my heart. That's who I am. That's honestly who I am. So I deleted the post. I deleted the post because I was wrong, even if I was justified in some sense. I was wrong on what I knew this post might do. It'll create more hate toward the ideology of Islam, which at the end of the day, if people knew how to say, well, I don't like that uh, ideology. Do they know how to just not like an ideology and not let that rub off on the people who hold to the ideology? And to my Muslim family and friends, do we know how to say we are or identify as Muslims, but not let that be your identity so much that if someone is being critical of it, you're not having to attack them? See, this is the difficult problem. How do we solve it? I really think it's creating the friendships, getting to understand each other and trying to build relationships across the aisle. Because when I brought Siraj into my house and I helped him for 30 days, I really had a different understanding that opened my eyes on Muslims and their families and understanding that they are just like me. Their mom and dad sound just like my mom and dad. They want what we want. They want good. We want good. They really do. Now, that's one family. I get it. There might be families somewhere in the Middle East that hold to uh, what we call backwards ideas and stuff. But even they, in their own worldview, I guarantee you, have certain ethics that would relate to what we want and how we want peace for our families and friends, etc. To our own families and whatnot, right? So we're tribalistic in some sense. This is part of our evolutionary mechanism. But the point I'm trying to get at is, when I'm doing this Islamic material, when I'm studying with these scholars, when I'm learning from them, yes, I'm understanding that there's non-Muslim sources and Muslim sources. I want to know it all. The same way I approach Christianity or Judaism, the Hebrew Bible. If I want to understand any worldview, I want to really get all of the picture and consider all of the pieces from various angles. When nations get conquered and let's say three different nations have a perspective, I want to know all the different perspectives and give them the credit they deserve on what they're trying to say. Like oftentimes when I have debates, my friend Jonathan Sheffield will go in and what he does is he'll point out what the Bible says. He tries to use the other sources to kind of help back up his perspective of the Bible, right? Because, you know, he believes the Bible. Um, but he also is trying to be fair with the other sources. The scholars I have come on and they want to take the Bible and the other sources and show you why the other sources are probably more reliable in some way. And if someone believes the Bible is true, and that's their, presupp their presupposition, then they're going to want to side with the Bible sources. And I imagine the same thing would be in Muslim tradition. So if there's non-Muslim sources that are describing something, is there good reason to say the non-Muslim sources may not have more accurate information than those who are in Arabia describing this a century or two later? This is up for debate. This is why I love the scholars. But I say that to say, like, when we're engaging into this, there are people in the chat who just want it not to be true. And sure, I mean, I study this with the assumption that it's man-made, but I don't want us to use this as a polemic and as a weapon against our friends and whatnot. I know some people will do that regardless. I want us to understand it because I honestly just intrinsically have an interest 
on wanting to know the history of how these religions develop. I'm quite fascinated in understanding man and why we think the way that we do. Why did these religions evolve and why do they take on new traditions and knowing what people believed and all of those things. And if I was born in a Muslim country and I believed what I believed, I'd hope someone would try to empathize and understand me, even if they didn't believe me and vice versa. So I really want peace. I really want us to understand each other better. But what I find often is polemics and battles and wars going back and forth and, ba and debates and this and that. I think we need to do something different. I think we need to try and create conversations, not debates about who's got a bigger you know what, because that doesn't help. It's just feeding the tribalism on one side against the other. Is there a way we can bridge it? Is there a way we can have those conversations respecting each other enough, but coming closer? My experience with Siraj told me they're just like me. And would I attack myself? Would I think less of my family and what I have? We don't understand each other enough. And I think we need to understand each other more. That's my honest from the heart. And so please take the time. Go subscribe to Ter Terran Pools. And I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, brother. We are now in connection and we're talking now. Um, I really want people to go and support good channels. Go support scholarship because we need to learn from each other if we're going to understand these things. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope your heart is like mine and you want to create a better world. And don't blame all Muslims for this 24-year-old's action over here against Salman Rushdie. Salman has every right to speak the way he wants, to criticize as he wants in the West, and that man's actions were wrong. And many of my Muslim friends think that that man's actions were wrong. And how do they justify that their, the actions of that man were wrong? Just depends on the Muslim you ask. A lot of them say to kill one man is to kill all humanity, which is something that they quote. So let's give them credit. When Muslims are saying that, give them the credit. Let's show them like, yes, this is good. And I just felt like I wanted to make this, this video because that truly is my heart. Yes, I'm a critic. Yes, I want to poke holes. Yes, I want to understand how these things, these stories, these legends, these folklore, how all of this stuff develop. That's why I love scholarship. But let's not be weapons against ourselves. Because if you fight these other people, the way I look at it now is we're fighting ourselves. We are a human race. We are all humans here and we're all trying to live and let live. We have to try to come closer. And I don't think fighting is going to help. That's my heart. That's my struggle. And that's what I'm trying to do with my channel, Myth Vision Podcast. I love you. And I hope you're with me in this, that we can go and try to better the world and bring light to these ideas. So to my Muslim friends who are watching, I love you. To my Jewish friends who are watching, I love you. To my Christian friends who are watching, I love you. And I want to try and be a better person in those conversations with whoever and wherever you're from. So that goes for all my friends, Hindus, you name it, right? But I have like specifically engaged in the Abrahamic faith so far and then some of the cults that are out there. But I want to do better and I hope you will as well. Thank you. Join Myth Vision's Patreon today to access hundreds of videos that I have worked hard in high quality content that are not in public domain. They're only on the Patreon. You will also have direct access to me, referring academics, questions, ideas, or just want a private chat. You have that access with me. Also, I'm trying to do more traveling to educate people from more academics and expand what kind of material I do produce on MythVision. This is a full-time gig and you're helping the community by joining. I'm trying to put together more to educate people who have harmful cultic practices or ways in which they're harming society. We are educating them from MythVision 
on better understanding these ancient texts and mythologies and history in a way like not many shows do. So please, I could use your help and you're going to get and benefit a lot by joining as a member.